So I actually wanted to talk to you about the Salah thing. Remember, we're kind of stuck on the Salawat and the Salah. Yes, yes. God praise. Yes. So uh, I did research Imam? on that, and I was right about the the word Salah yeah. and Salawat are two different like meanings in a way. So okay. Salah could mean uh, not only can it mean honor, but it can also mean blessing. No, it doesn't. I already answered that. Um, can I quote Abdullah ibn Masood? I remember you saying that it can't mean blessing. But yeah. the thing with, Ara with Arabic is one word can mean multiple things. Friend, Abdullah ibn Masood, Ali ibn Abu Talib said, the word Salah does not have the same meaning as Barakah because in the prayer when Muhammad told you to pray in Tashahud, they say he distinguished between Salah, Barakah, and Rahmah. So are you saying Abdullah ibn Masood and Ali ibn Abu Talib didn't know what they're talking about? No, I even told not. you. Huh? Of course not. Okay, so I already told you it can't mean blessing because even when you said the tashahud or when you were talking about in your five daily prayer when you ask Allah to send salah, right, and blessing on Muhammad's family like you did to Abraham, even there you use two words, sali and barik. Barik means blessing. Sali cannot mean blessing. Did you forget so you mentioned that? They say, they say it also means honor. What honor? They say it's like honor, like Oh, so Allah Salli Alaihi Wasallam. So Salli. God, God honor Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Abraham. Yeah, how does He honor them by praying for them and blessing them? Exactly. That doesn't mean He's not. He honors them by praying for them and blessing them. That's the point. Here, let me show you this again. This ayah. One more time. One more time. Let's go through this. And then I'm going to quote Ali ibn Abu Talib and Abdullah ibn Masood. Here it is. Verily, God and His angels pray. You saluna, ala and Nabi. For the prophet. Now, if I ask you, the angels, when they use saluna, what does that mean they're doing? Saluna. What does that mean they're doing? What are the angels doing? It means like they're praying. But it says Allah and the angels do it together. Allah and his angels use saluna. So why did you change the definition for Allah? Allah and his angels. That's what I'm saying. It could mean like honor. Like you saluna. So the, the angels are honoring Muhammad? The angels are honoring Muhammad? Because it says all of the angels are performing salah. So what does it mean when the angels do salah for Muhammad? They're both doing it together. Allah and the angels are doing this action together. Wah! Allah, wah! And the angels are doing this action. And you just told me when the angels do saluna, then they are praying for the Prophet. But it says Allah is doing it with them. Then you say, well, it doesn't mean prayer. I'm confused. Because then the next part. Now look at the next part. O ye who believe, pray salu for him. So how many groups are performing salah? For Muhammad, angels, you. So when it says you, salu, pray for him. Are you honoring him or are you also praying for him? No, honoring him. We're sending our blessings and salutations to him. Okay, so you honor by praying for him. No, we send our we send our blessings. And How do you send blessings, man? Only Allah blesses. How do you send anyone's blessings? How do you do it by praying, right? You send blessings. May Allah bless him, right? Yeah, may God bless him. Okay, so you're praying to Allah to bless. Notice, angels are praying to Allah to bless. But Allah is also praying. So who does Allah pray to to bless? They're, all three are doing that same action. Look, it's there. I'm not making up. Allah, angels, and believers, they're all performing the action. And you're admitting the angels and the believers, when they do salu, they are praying. But then when it's Allah doing it, no, but it doesn't mean that. All right, then what does it mean? Why does it change when Allah and angels and believers are all doing it? They're all doing the same action. Salah, salah, salah. God and his angels, you saluna. You believe, salu. So when angels and the believers are doing salah, it's prayer. But when Allah is doing it with them, no, it doesn't mean prayer. Come on, man. I mean, saluna means like to send, like because they could have said his angels yisallu, but they said yisaluna. Because it's the angels and Allah doing it together. It's a group that's more than two. So obviously, he's going to use the plural, but that's more proof that he's doing it with them. Now, let me give you this hadith. Maybe I don't know. This is from Riyad as salihin by Imam an Nawawi, I just gave you the link. Riyad Salihin. Okay, look what it says. Book of Knowledge. Here's what your Prophet said about prayer. Okay, same verb. Like watch here. Watch here. I'm gonna put it on the screen. Abu Umar reported that the Messenger Allah said, "Allah, let's count how many people, and His angels, and the people of the heavens, and the earth, even the ants in the rocks, and the fish, pray for blessings on those who teach people good." Tirmidhi. Hadith on the Riyadh Salahin translated by Aisha Buli. Okay, wait. Angels, people of heavens and the earth, ants and fish, they are praying for blessing on the righteous. But it says Allah is also doing it with them. So it doesn't mean prayer now? Because it says they're all of them, all of them are doing it. It says pray for blessings. Who is doing it? Who's praying for blessing? 
Allah, angels, those in heaven and on earth, ants and the fish. So you wouldn't deny that angels, those in heaven and earth, ants and the fish, they pray that Allah will bless. Who, who does he bless? Who do they pray that Allah will bless? Here it is. Watch it. Let me show it to you. Those who teach people good. But then Allah is doing it with them. Allah and his angels and the people of the heavens and the earth. But now it doesn't mean Allah is praying anymore. So it could mean like uh, dua, like... I'm trying to make it make sense, and what I'm coming up with is but even a du'a is an invocation. You're invoking Allah when you do, do uh, when you perform du'a, uh, du'a. Du you're invoking Allah. That means you're still praying to Allah. So when Allah performs a du'a, who does He pray to? I'm still waiting for that. What does He pray to, man? Well, I feel like Allah can't make a du'a because if Allah ordains it, it's going to happen. So then, Allah why does makes a du'a? Then that's like a contradiction. That's your problem, not mine. See, now you're seeing the problem exactly. But it says what it says. Allah, angels, believers, they pray. Allah, angels, people in heaven and earth, <clears throat> right? And the ants and the fish, they're all praying. Exactly. You see the problem. Exactly. Now, here's another version of this hadith. This is another translation, same hadith by Tirmidhi. Abu Umama al-Bahili narrated. Now watch. Two men were mentioned before the Messenger of Allah. One of them a worshiper and the other a scholar. So the Messenger of Allah said, the superiority of the scholar over the worshiper is like my superiority over the least of you. Now watch. Then the Messenger of Allah said, indeed, mm -hmm. Allah, his angels, the inhabitants of the heavens and the earths, even the ants in the hole, even the fish say salah. In the ears, they all do it. Even Allah upon the one who teaches the people to do good, Hassan. And then Timothy says it's Hassan, <clears throat> Gharib, Sahih. So again, Allah joins the angels, joins those in heaven and earth, joins the ants and the fish to perform prayer. And in 3356, it says, Allah and the angels and believers perform prayer for Muhammad. I don't know how much clearer can it be. So you have the problem. Who does your God pray for when he prays? We so, believe. Like I said, the word salah, it, it could mean not just prayer, but it's also saying it could mean honor and blessings. Okay, but my friend, when the angels perform salah, you're saying that they're praying that Allah will honor and bless. When believers are performing salah, you're saying they're praying that Allah will honor and bless. But it says Allah is doing salah with them. Why does it change definition when all three groups are doing it? How does it change? We can't, we can't see God praying. That's your problem. That's not my problem. That's what I'm trying to say. God we can see. We see the problem. That's the same thing as saying like God, like stuff for the lost steals. Like no, but, no, can't. it's not. It's not the same thing. But I'm just letting you know that's the problem you have, not me. No, I understand that. Right? It's not the problem. That's what we're trying to get you to see. You have a problem, my friend. Your problem is that the Quran and Hadith say Allah is praying. So who does he pray to? Now, as a Christian, as a Christian who believes Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not the Father. They're distinct persons who love one another, communicate with one another, and have fellowship with one another. They can pray to the to the other. But that's because there are three persons in God. You believe Allah is only one person. So who is he praying to? That's what I'm trying to get at. Right? Yeah, I don't know. As as a Mus as a Muslim, we, we don't believe that Allah prays. Yeah. I, know, like, I know I know it's written there and it sounds funny, but like you can ask any Muslim, Allah cannot pray. Okay, but when I ask the Quran and I ask the Hadith and I ask Muhammad, he says he can pray. So who am I, who should I follow? So I went to the Quran, he prays. I went to the Hadith, he prays. I, I don't get yeah, it. Who but, should I follow? Like I said, the word salah means multiple things. It's not just prayer. Okay. All right. Well, if you want to believe that, there's not much I can do because I keep telling you that it's three groups doing the same thing. 3356, group A, group B, group C. Allah, angels, and believers, they're all performing the same action, salah. You're admitting for group B and group C. Angels and believers, it means pray. But when it's about Allah, now you change the definition. How can the meaning change in the same verse in the same context? How does the meaning change in the same verse, same context? It's not a different context. Three groups are performing the same action. You're admitting that when it comes to the two groups, they are praying. But when it comes to group A, meaning Allah, no, it doesn't mean that. Why? Well, because you can't handle the fact that your God prays. All right. Well, that means maybe you need a, to. A God prayer. cannot pray, though. Everybody knows but, this. Okay. All right. Okay. No, not everyone knows it. Muhammad didn't know it. The Jews didn't know it. I don't know it because we see that God prays. You don't want to admit it. That's okay. That's your dilemma. Well, let me show you now what they said about the difference in meaning. What did Abdullah ibn Masood and Ali ibn Abu Talib say about the different words? This is going to come from page 25. Kadi Iyad, Musa al Yasubi, Muhammad, Messenger of Allah, as Shifa of Kadi Iyad, translated by Aisha Buli. Kadi Iyad, Musa al Yasubi, right? And this comes from page 25. Okay, what does he say? Okay, now watch. Quote 
Allah makes the merit of his prophet clear by first praying blessing on himself. Who translated this way? Aisha Beauty. She's translating the Arabic of Qadiyat into English, and she's a Muslima. And she's saying that it shows that Allah prays blessing on himself. And then by the prayer of the angels, and then by commanding his slaves to pray blessing and peace on him as well. Now watch. Abu Bakr ibn Furaq related that one of the ulama interpreted the words of the prophet, the coolness of my eye is in the prayer, as meaning Allah's prayer. That Muhammad delights when Allah prays. Allah's prayer is his delight. And that of the angels and that of his community in response to Allah's command until the day of rising. The prayer of angels and men is supplication from him and that of Allah's mercy. So Allah's praying to give mercy to Muhammad, your prophet. Now watch. Watch here. Let's continue. Right here. Does it mean the same thing? Does prayer and blessing mean the same? Here you go. Quote, page 25. It is said that they pray means, this is what you've been telling me. Watch. Guys, listen to, he's been saying this. Kadiyat says he's wrong. Listen, this is what you've been saying. It is said that they pray means they invoke blessing, barakah. That's what you've been saying. However, when the prophet taught people the prayer on himself, he made a distinction between the word what? Do you see it on the screen? Between the words salat and barakah. So here, Kadiyat saying, what you've been telling me is wrong. Because the word pray doesn't mean barakah because your prophet used two words. All right? Salat and barakah, they don't mean the same thing. We will return to the meaning of the prayer on him later. Now, let's continue reading. Here's another quote, page 250. This is from Kadiyat, translated by Aisha Buli. The prophet made a distinction between what? You see it on the screen? As you focus, don't let them disturb you. Watch here. What did the prophet say? What did he distinguish? Salat and Barakah in a hadith in which he taught about making the prayer on him. So your prophet said the words Salat or Salah and Barakah don't mean the same thing. They're two different meanings. This sure. indicates that they have two separate meanings. Right. But you keep telling me that Salah or Salat means blessing. Okay, if not blessing, yeah, I mean, it, could mean, it could mean honor. Okay, well, hold on. Let's see if that's they agree. Here's Ibn Masood. You ready? Page 258. Ibn Masood used to say, when, the, when you bless the Prophet, then make the prayer on him excellent. You do not know. Perhaps it will be shown to him. Say, O Allah, bestow your prayers, your mercy, and your blessing on the Master of the Messengers, the Imam of God. Wait, the man of God fearing the leader of the good and the messenger. So what are you asking Allah to? To do according to Ibn Masood? He says, when you ask Allah to bless Muhammad, say, Ya Allah, Allahumma, bestow your prayers, your mercy, and your blessings. Three different words, they don't mean the same thing. Your Salah, your Barakah, your Rahmah. Ask him to do three things. So prayer cannot mean blessing and it cannot mean mercy. You keep saying honor, but then we have the problem. Allah and the angels and believers are performing salah. So that means they're honoring Muhammad. Well, how do they honor Muhammad? By praying for him. So we're back to Allah praying. Anyway, this is all I have to say on this because I can't make you see it. Even even, even Ali ibn Abu Talib said the same thing. Here you go. Same source. He says it doesn't mean the same thing. Ali also said about the prayer of the Prophet in the ayat. Look what the verse he's quoting, the one I've been quoting to you. Allah and his angels pray on the Prophet, 3356. At your servants, the servants, Labayk, right? Labayk. And obedience, my Lord, the prayers of Allah, the good and the merciful, the near angels, the true ones, the martyrs, the sal salihun, and anything that glorifies you, O Lord of the worlds, be upon Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Okay, there you go. So anyway, your Quran, the Hadith, the Muslim followers of Muhammad, the Sahaba, all say Allah prays. Judaism and the Talmud says their God prays. New Testament says, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they pray because they're not the same person, so they pray to one another. You're the one and the other Muslims are having a hard time with it. Okay. What did the Christians say? That Father, Son, Holy Spirit pray to one another because prayer is communication, communion, fellowship. So the Father speaks, loves, and communicates to the Son and the Spirit. The Son speaks, loves, and communicates to the Father and the Spirit. The Spirit speaks, loves, and communicates to the Father and the Spirit because they're not the Father and the Son. I'm sorry. The Spirit speaks, loves, and communicates to the Father and the Son. As the Son speaks, loves, communicates to the Father and the Spirit. And as the Father speaks, loves, and communicates to the Son and the Spirit because they're not the same person, though they're one God. We have, we have no problem. You, your God prays and you're having a problem. In fact, reciting the Quran, is that prayer? Is that worship? Reciting the Quran is a form. When you recite the Quran, isn't that ibadah, an act of worship? It is an act of worship. So it's ibadah, right? Yeah. It's worship. A, it's a form of ibadah, yeah. Yeah, it says that your God, Allah, was reciting the Quran before he created the heavens and the earth. Are you okay with your with Allah reciting the Quran? What's wrong with that? It, it, you just said reciting the his, Quran. We believe that they're his words. So for him. Yeah, but wait, you just said, listen to what you said. Reciting the Quran is worship. It's an act of worship, right? So when Allah recites the Quran, you're admitting that's an act of worship he was worshiping. Yeah, so I mean. Oh, so you, you're okay with Allah worshiping. Okay. 
he's worshiping himself if that's the case. Okay, so you're okay with it? I mean, if, right. if, if you're you saying go. that's what it says, then. Yep, here it is. You can click on it. Here it is. There it is. Now let me show, quote it for you. So it, it could be in like a different kind of sense when like he's, right. they're saying that he prays. Like it doesn't mean like he's bowing down. No, it doesn't have to be bowing down. He's just praying. Okay, that's fine. Because Allah doesn't have a physical body. There he bows down to the ground. Okay, but he's still praying and he's still worshiping. That's fine. Here. The excellent qualities of the Quran. Abu Huraira reported. So God's pray, messenger. Praying and worshiping are two different things though. But reciting the Quran is worship. It's ibadah. Because you don't have to bow down. You can be sitting on the floor in the open Quran and recite it. And that's worship. That's a form you of worship. Yeah. You, don't to, you don't have to do sujood. That's a okay, form so of worship. It's worship. But now your God is reciting the Quran. A thousand years before creating the heavens and earth, God recited Taha, chapter 20, and Yasin. And when the angels heard the recitation, they said, Happy are a people to whom this comes down. Happy are the minds which carry this, and happy are the tongues which utter this. Darimi transmitted it. So your God is reciting Quran, which is Ibadah, worship. So you're okay with Allah worshiping? I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to think. It's it's Allah. Like, I don't have a I don't have an opinion. I okay. can't say am I oh. am I mad or sad or happy. So if Allah can worship, then why do you have a problem with Jesus praying to the Father and still being God who became man? You no, know, I don't have a problem with it. It just what? doesn't make sense for Jesus to prostrate to himself. Well, what do you want him to do if he's a man? If he's a man and he's a perfect man. And he perfectly submits to the father. You want him to ignore the father and disrespect him? No, of course not. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if he's if he's prostrating to somebody, that means there's somebody higher than him. No, it means that there's someone that he honors and loves and reverences as his father. That's all it means. It doesn't mean he's not God because he's also man. And as man, he's the perfect man. And the perfect man does not dishonor God the father, but honors God the father. And one of the ways you show honor is by your bodily gestures. Right. So we can put that argument aside. Now, you have